Welcome everyone to the second online Kubert Summit. Um, uh, so a big welcome to the entire Kubert community. Um, in just a moment, uh, Fabian Deutsch, uh, our uh, lead developer, is going to be uh, introducing the event um, and telling you what's going on with Kubert right now. Before then, a few things. Um, number one, um, you'll notice that chat panel on the right. Uh, if you have questions uh, for the speaker uh, in the presentation throughout the day, uh, feel free to ask them in the chat panel. And the moderator of the session, I uh, will hold on to them and ask them the speaker at the appropriate time. Uh, during Q&A for the various sessions, you are actually welcome to ask your question out loud if you wish to do so. Please simply type, I have a question to ask out loud in the right-hand column and um, in the chat window, that is. Um, and again, uh, the moderator will give you a chance to um, ask that uh, aloud during the Q&A portion of each session. Uh, we have a very full schedule today. So one other thing I want to remind you is the Coover Project does have a code of conduct and the code of conduct applies to this event. Um, so. Uh, please treat your fellow community members with respect. And with that, uh, let me introduce Fabian Deutsch, although I don't really need to introduce him to this audience because you all know him. So Fabian, um, you want to get started? Josh, thank you very much. And uh, yes, I'm, I'm here to serve us, right? And um, so let me get to my first slide. So yes, a quick Hello to everybody and thanks for taking the time to, to join us today and thanks to Josh and the team to actually make this happen, right? So not only to Josh and the team who's helping us with the infrastructure size and planning, but also to, to all the speakers who invest the time to prepare sessions for today that all of you can enjoy, not only today, but also for tomorrow. Um, yes, so thanks again. About myself, my name is Fabian Deutsch. Um, I'm uh, an engineer at Red Hat and just with Kubert for a while and happy to do this small intro to the summit. But I think the real heroes are, are all of you and contributing to Kubert, not only source code, but helping us with a lot of things in the community. All right, next slide, please. <laughs> That's just me doing it. All right, so this is our second annual Kubert summit. The last one took place roughly a year ago. Um, I'm actually not sure about the exact dates. The version back then was version 38, right? A, a leading zero, right? So we're still not, and, and the version we have today is 0 050, right? So we're still not with a stable version, um, but we're still moving forward rapidly. So what happened in the last year technically? Let's focus on the technical aspects first. While the world out there kept doing what it did in the last two years, right? We continue to, to build features for the storage area, the virtualization networking areas in Kubert. This happened often in the core Kubert, Kubert repository, but also many repositories around it, right? So it's a Kubert project and the Kubert project by now is more than, than the Kubert Kubert repository. So some things that happened this year, and this is by far not a complete list, just a few notable highlights that stood out to me. Um, we saw enhancement in the storage area, where we work, continue to work on hot plugging, while hot plugging is, is still not, and who knows if, um, still not available in Kubernetes, but for Kubert, because it's such a classic virtualization feature, storage hot plug, memory CPU, and networking hot plug as well, by the way. Um, we looked at it, and um, we had Alexander contributing this feature in, in many days of work, and it's great to see that we have a um, a nice flip-flop solution in place by now, which uh, seems to work fairly well. On the other hand, we have um, snapshots. While um, offline snapshot landed first, we, it was then followed by online snapshots, which was um, which is nice because today we're then able to to snapshot um, a VM that is running. Also, one of these features that are expected from a virtualization management platform. For core compute features, I think notable highlights are, for example, VNUMA. Um, last year, we implemented VNUMA, which allows to effectively reflect the whole CPU and core topology 
into the VM. That's specifically int interesting to um, high performance workloads, which do a lot of computing. And the second feature that we worked on through the year, and it's, again, it's not a complete list, but the second notable feature is vGPU slicing, for example. While the support to do PCI device pass-through and um, mediated devices pass-through landed a while ago, in the past year, there was additional work in order to configure that in a nice way as well. Right? So today, if you have the right drivers on your nodes, you can leverage Qvert and the Qvert CR in order to configure these graphics cards in your nodes and slice them up into virtual slices that can then be assigned to VMs. And Qvert is providing this end-to-end -end solution, right? The slicing, the exposure as Kubernetes resources and the third party consumption into VMs. Enabling workloads, right, is, is what happened so far, right? Hot Snapchat's snap, just new Numa slicing. So we saw a lot of use cases coming in and that drove the development of the features. Another notable group is actually scale, right? And while I while there were many fixes in the scale area, the actually the the bigger thing that happened is that we established on the I mean, that people established big scale, which is fantastic, right? So we have big scale, which is meeting once a week, uh, which is looking at different aspects of, of Kubert, right? So we want people, right? People are running Kubert at scale in production or for testing. And the purpose or the intention of this big scale is to see that we continue to scale, right? That our controllers are set up correctly, that, that we can scale from all ends of, this, um, of the project. An interesting aspect of that group is to define how do we actually measure scale, which is not as easy as it sounds. The implicit interesting aspect is that Qbert reached its scale. I think we discovered bugs that we are looking at a huge scale, right? We speak about a tenth of thousands of VMs, which is great. Another area which is not so visible, but also saw a lot of attention actually, is the security area. There were many PRs about it, which reworked very, I mean, very old, but very new code areas in Qbert, but they have in common that they're security sensitive. Um, and the effort about security is to eventually get to um, VM pods, which run unprivileged and as not as root and can run with random UIDs assigned to containers for security reasons. And this required a couple of bit of refactoring across the code base. And this is progressing, but we're sadly not done yet. But it's good that there are also no known blockers, which, which will stop us from achieving that goal. There were also a few features that support uh, Kubernetes operations. Right? Interesting here is, for example, the eventual updates. Right? So while the Kubernetes operator had, uh, is there for a while, and I think it's um, actually a nice component right? to really adopt the operator pattern and encode operational, operational knowledge um, into a software component, on the other hand, to be honest, I wonder, isn't it a two, a, you know, a two two bladed sword like like so many swords out there, I guess? But isn't the problem that maybe some admins will will rely too much on operators to the operations for them? But I think that's more of a philosophical discussion than a technical one. Long story short, with eventual updates, we finally have some logic that is not only updating the control control plane components like Word Handler and Word Controller, but also ensuring that the Word launchers, which are running your VMs will be updated eventually. This is really helpful if you want to enforce that a certain Kubert version is deployed across your cluster. VM pools landed to manage um, a group of VMs at scale. Also bleeding into the operations area is, is our work on metrics and runbooks. Runbooks specifically are interesting because it's great that we add metrics, it's great that we alerts, but in the end, do they help users? Not necessarily, right? As a user, if I'm woken up at night and telling me Qbert is down, but I've got no idea why it happened and what to do. That is where runbooks come to the game, right? Runbooks tell a user, an operator for Kubernetes cluster, Qbert cluster of what to do. All right, so these are like things that happen in the core Qbert, uh, Qbert code base. But the nice thing is that there happens so much more in the broader ecosystem, not in the Qbert ecosystem alone, but actually in the CNCF ecosystem, right? We have a project that's focusing on providing tecton tasks or reference tasks and pipelines in order to enable better automation for Kubert VMs, so for the workloads, but also for the deployment of Kubert itself. Uh, sorry, that was actually Argo. For tecton, we have all kinds of automations around uh, VMs, obviously. We also have um, a good collaboration with, with actually the Libvirt project, right? Our peers that we're building upon, Libvirt and Qmu, 
And there's a small side project that I want to call out because there was so much, so many thoughts went into that area, which is called past, right? We have that problem of we want to hook VMs to the Kubernetes network and we have solutions obviously there today. But we, we also have the feeling that there might be some more work needed to make that great, right? And past is one of these um, small tools that is being researched by Stefano in this case. And, and I'm curious to see um, how these small things will eventually land in Kuber to make it even better and, and find the right trade-off between traditional virtualization and the declarative cloud native future of the of aspects of Kubernetes. Another big chunk of work or things that happen is actually the cluster API provider for Kuber, right? So with CAPK, which is its own project and could find it on Slack, uh, with a whole new community that's interested to, to bring the cluster API to Kubert, right? So to leverage Kubert in order to bring up new tenant Kubernetes clusters um, on top of Kubernetes using Kubert. So this was a small technical wrap up of features that landed into in the project. And by the way, a lot of the work that also went into it was a lot of maintenance work and stabilization work. Um, and that's great actually, right? If we slowly trend to stabilize the project overall. Speaking about the features that we drive, right, and the use case that caused us to implement them, um, I think what we saw, if we if we step back from the technical side, is people, right? People people are are at all the ends of the project. Sometimes they are bots, right, and they help us to do other stuff. Um, but we see a continuous a continuous stream of contributions, first time contributors, right, from from across the board, um, to the Kubert code base. But I want to call out. Um, we as a project, we as a community, we live not only from code, we need, we need more, right? We, we need community members to help on the user guide, right? To see that it's great, right? To tell people how, how is Kubert used? What are best practices in order to use Kubert, right? And to pay attention to it, to, to keep it updated and to keep it accurate. The same is true for bugs, right? We have a lot of issues open on Kubert Kubert. And I think it would be great if we can encourage more people to support us on these, I hesitate to call it outer skirts of the project because in the end they are as important as the code, right? But to help us uh, to, to, um, to tidy up these areas and make it, make it a clean and open and well-maintained project across the board, right? Not only on the, um, on the feature side. So, this was about the project maintenance. Now let's take a little bit, a small look at um, what happened on the adopter side, right? Adopters in the CNCF sense are users and vendors. Um, and I think we can identify and integrators. We, we saw a couple of community members stepping up in the past year to say that they adopted uh, Kubert as well. I think I mean, we have that list in the Kubert repository and we have, for example, Platform 9, which is doing a lot of stuff with Kubert, right? It's great to see the managed platform of Platform 9. And it's nice to see that Google Antos, right, has seen or is now adopting more um, of Kubert. So the rancher, we'll have a talk from them, and I'm looking forward to that one, um, has also gone with Kubert and picked up Kubert and, and associated projects. So it's great to see that we see integrators and vendors picking up Kubert. What I would like, what I think we, we need we all need to do is to encourage our users to step up and tell them or have them tell us what their user stories are, right? What are their use cases so that we can really, really, really get close to them and help them to solve their problems. So if you are there, please speak up, don't hesitate. Join our weekly community call and tell us what you're really into and what you're missing. So I did not touch it yet, but there's obviously also the, uh, the fact that Kubert is a CNCF sandbox project, right? But in the second half of last year, we actually opened the PR. So we started the process to see if Kubert is getting into the CNCF, CNCF incubator. There are a couple of requirements on the project to get into that stage. And we worked on them. Several people worked on them, right? It's a, it's a whole team that was working on this um, process to get Kubert into the incubator. And we, there were a lot of answers provided and was great working with the CNCF TOC to really also challenge us in, in some areas and to keep us honest. It's great to see that. And the voting is open, 
right? So if you, and I did update the slides, but I failed to reload. There's a link in the slides if I share them later on. Feel free to, to look at the uh, PR on GitHub and the at the CNCF to to look at the due diligence document and share your feedback there as well. If you have questions about the project, about its governance model, then uh, yeah, please share it with us. I'm looking forward. It would be great to see if we can make that step, if it's justified, and I think it is. We have uh, we've seen a continued growth, and uh, uh, I'm thrilled if we finally do that step into the incubator. So please stay tuned on that side. So where do we go from here? It was a quick wrap up of what we did, right? And I mean, many of the details um, from what I just showed from the high level, right? You will find them in the upcoming sessions today and tomorrow. Don't forget to sign up for tomorrow as well, right? So if you join now, well done uh, for tomorrow. Please sign up again to, to make sure that you can join these sessions as well. And for what, where do we want to go? What, what, where should we be going, right? The world is open. We have many ways we can take or many paths. If you ask me, right, I think we're here to solve real world problems. And I think we saw also by, by reconsidering what adopters we saw, people that go all in with containers, they finally start to see uh, the problem that Kuber is solving. That's great, right? So if people go to containers, then they wondered, what do we do about our legacy format, right, about virtual machines? And with Qbert, we solved that problem, right? To establish Kubernetes as the de facto compute platform. And I think we need to see that we serve these needs, right? So to continue to work on the usability of the project, right? To make it easier for our, for our users to, to use Qbert, right? To be successful, to solve their problem. Um, we're getting trusted, right? Landing in so many in so many vendor stacks also puts some burden on us to be stable, right? To take care that we don't introduce regressions. So stability will probably stay on our roadmap for a while for now. Scalability, if you ask me, there's probably um, a limit to where Kubernetes should scale, but regardless of what that scale is and how operators want to run Kubernetes, we should follow, right? In reasonable bounds. And I think it would be interesting to see how far can we go and what makes sense. But we've got the scale, which is taking care of that, and that's great. Because we get trusted, right, and because people put us into production, that's also putting the burden on us to be operational, right, so that you can operate us. The whole move of metrics and alerts and runbooks, that's in the right direction. Let's make sure that we don't that we don't miss the train, right, and help our people. The user guide is another a piece in the puzzle to make it easy to operate it, right, and also. I noticed that on Reddit, right, Kuber is coming up more often. I think it's great if we can build this broader community to, to help building and sharing the knowledge about how to operate Kubert, how to run VMs, in order to, to have a self-sustained community which can answer these questions by itself or themselves. Ultimately, um, we'll probably continue to close feature gaps, right, compared to existing uh, virtualization management platforms. And maybe this year or in the upcoming year, we're also going to see that we're going to lead um, maybe the um, the um, innovation in this area, because so far, to be honest, we catch up with a lot of features that already existed. I think it will be interesting if we make that flip, right, and say, all right, we've got so many features, so what is next, right? What can help us in this context? And, and I think seeing these innovations coming up, that will be interesting. I'm really curious to see what it will be. I don't know. All right, and with this, this is a small wrap-up. Um, before we get to the q and I really encourage you, uh, encourage you, join the sessions. I think there's great content in here from integrators and from the development side. That's great. And now I'm really looking for some questions and hope to provide some answers. OK, we have just a couple of minutes for questions. Um, so you can ask a question in the chat. Or you can say, I have a question to ask aloud, and I will turn on your mic. So there's a question from Maya. What is the presentation platform? I think it's called Bevy. I think it's... Yes, this is uh, Bevy, um, which is a, a video and online meetup platform uh, hosted by the Cloud Native Computing Foundation, because we are a CNCF project. And thank you again for the infrastructure. And about live migration, when 
the VM has GPU. Uh, to, so I'm understanding the question is, will live migration work with GPUs as well? And I know that there's some work. Yeah. We enabled that for SRV already, right? And GPUs are similar. VGPUs are a little bit different and don't nail me. The experts are out there and we have sessions, if I'm mistaken, Actually, about GPU. Yeah, Josh. Yeah, in a, in a more session on live migration is later today. So yeah. um, definitely ask that question again. Exactly. So what else do we have? Incubation proposal, thanks for the link. Um, Tekton and Argo CD is the second tool that was mentioned. Tekton to really do, um, to automate the workloads and Argo CD is more focused on, um, which can also help you with infrastructure as code, right? Define what you want to have in Argo CD is ensuring that it's getting deployed on Kubernetes. All right. Okay. Stu wants to know what new feature uh, you're most excited about. Me? <laughs> ah, I need to think about that question, right? Um, I don't, I'm not sure if it's a single feature. I think it's, it's more about the project, right? Where do we want, where do we go, right? Do we manage to, to stay, to stick to the pace we have? And at the same time, strive for the stability, because again, as I said before, I think people start to trust us and we get somewhere and we should live up to that trust, right? I think we want to be, a, we want to be a serious project and mastering these expectations. I think that will be a challenge, but I think it's a great challenge. Yeah. Okay. And, and with that, um, you're introducing the next two speakers. Um, so we will, I uh, get started with Howard Jang's talk in just a couple of minutes, folks. So, so stick around. Yep. Thank you very much. Thank you.